What makes a game good? Is it the mechanics, which allows a player to interact and engage with the world and characters? Is it the story that provides a representation of meaning, which is evaluated through the player's lens? Or could it be its artistic depth? The expression where media immerses its user senses in a realm that could only exist in dreams. What if I told you there is a game that fit all of these and none at all at the same time? A game that lives in PlayStation obscurity. Would you believe me and continue watching or would you doubt and leave? Tell of a Sun is a game released in April 1997. The game greets you with the words wild, pure, simple life, and then to a 3D rendition of an angry sun. To me, it's one of the first true survival games out there. The mechanics of such genre specify the need to interact with elements that will guarantee survival in this harsh world for a few extra moments. Once you start the game, a charmingly cartoonish screen stares back at you. This world is not only inhabited by cavemen, other creatures live here as well. From simple birds to colossal mammoths, all in the desperate race we call life. You can select from a variety of three characters. They all have the same statistics, so the option granted is cosmetic only. The objective is clear. You need to survive for the good of your tribe. The world looks simple and desolated. This is only the first impression. The more it's explored, the more obvious it becomes that there's something out of place. Accompanying the blocky graphics, there's what could only be described as a dream nightmare fusion of a soundtrack that perfectly reflects the spaces that are being explored. The biomes range from prairies where the tribe lives, forests where most animals inhabit, barren deserts become dead traps for the unprepared, rivers and oceans block the way to unexplored lands. These hold sharks that will attack on sight, however, the biggest threat is the water itself. Mountains are devoid of life on the outside but hold an ecosystem that spreads through their maze-like interiors. It can be a worthy endeavor to explore them as long as you can find a way out. Finally, the Arctic Tundra. Here lies the be-all and all of the game, mammoths. These giant creatures hold the key to the secrets, the ladder to reach the tail of the sun. They will not go down without a fight and, unlike other creatures, a mammoth can effortlessly kill an unprepared caveman. Tell of the Sun is a fairly simplistic game. Many of its mechanics cannot be interacted in any meaningful way, they all work very subtly, but like a machine with moving cogs, each element is attached to another and proper function depends entirely on the system as a whole. All cavemen share a single body, with the body I mean their stats. For starters, their brain is the ability to share the intellect to advance and create tools as a group. This stat is one of the most important simply because it will allow you to upgrade to more efficient weapons. As your cultural level rises, so will your tribe members' huts and weapons. Following closely, swim is a stat that defines how much time you can stay underwater. In the world there are several islands you can visit, many of them hold secrets, which are only accessible if you can swim the large bodies of water in between. Next is hand or strength in general terms. This one is very straightforward. The stronger you are, the easier it is to kill. Propagate is the ability to reproduce and expand the tribe. The means by which they do so is unknown and the results are, well, unique. 
This stat works as a life counter. Once a character meets their demise, another will take their place. Lastly, we have both run and jump. These two are fundamental for your survival. You see, prey won't just stand there waiting for death, and neither should you. These stats won't race infinitely, and maxing them all is impossible. It works as a ladder with limited spots. If one goes up, another will go down. The ways to increase these stats are through food, which is represented by Japanese sweets littering the ground. Each item will increase a single stat by a specific amount, which is demonstrated by the color of the glow the body part has. The warmer the color, the higher the increase is. The character, like any human, needs to eat to avoid starvation. This can be achieved by picking up the Japanese sweets, but merely doing this will not guarantee survival. It will only provide a small delay for the inevitable. Hunting is arguably the second most important part of the game. First, it's necessary to locate the prey, second, to engage with it, and lastly, if victorious, only then they can bring the meat back to the tribe. The more meat is brought, the more the tribe will expand and grow, both physically and culturally. Another caveman's need is to sleep, and no matter what they're doing, it will happen. They can be swimming, running, jumping, even hunting, they will still fall asleep. It always happens at night, so be sure to not hunt a big game as dusk falls. Originally, my intention was to give a list of every creature you can find. However, part of this game's charm is stumbling onto them. Each creature can be found in specific biomes that will be classified as docile or hostile. For prey, you have the usual suspects, birds, primates, deers, most of these will only be considered a snack to the tribe. Their threat level is low, as most of them will only attack once threatened. Bigger game can be found near rivers and plains. These hold hippos, buffaloes, and boars. These giant meat slabs will be difficult to slaughter, but only because they constitute a good meal for your tribe. On the top of the food chain are saber-toothed tigers, massive cats that will attack on sight. The best way to deal with them is running away. Mammoths, however, are the objective. These colossal beasts will be aggressive from the get-go. If a caveman fights a mammoth without weapons, their immediate demise is almost guaranteed. are the creatures you can find in human-like shrooms, docile, living off oxygen, no head or torso. The game drops you into this world that feels simple and pure with a single objective in mind, survive. There are no quests, there is no dialogue. Nobody to tell you what to do. The limited way you can engage with the world at the start can be interpreted as restrictive, lackluster, or even lazy. However, by the end of the game, these actions become the core fundamentals of the game's loop. Explore, kill, return. A so simple yet trance-like game can only be described as an illusion. If you play this game in your childhood, I'm sure any recollection of it might feel as a dream. This is enhanced by the amazing soundtrack that is incomprehensible yet so unique and recognizable. Contrasted with the goofy cartoonish sound effects, the game has its like salt and sugar night and day. The same can be said about the night day cycle which by PlayStation standard is fairly uncommon. Paired up with the rain and snow effects that don't affect gameplay, it gives off this feeling of unique. You might think this game is more complex than what it shows, and you could be right. At the same time, you could say it's implicitly simple, in which case you are also correct. The evolution of your tribe is another experience in itself. The closer you are to the sun, the more evident it becomes. 
The tribe people are becoming something else, evolving with time. Maybe due to genetic errors? Maybe because of the environment? We really don't know. Once you finish the game, the ending is as much of a mystery as the game itself. Depending on your leading attribute, you can get one of nine endings. Every single one of them is stranger than the previous. One of them, in my opinion, holds the explanations for the very weird creature we found in the forest. Please, watch this short ending. a vision that day, while some human beings started new lives in the sky or under the water, those that did not evolve chose to spend their lives on the ground. The people soon start to live on the ground and begin to live reliably and in cooperation, but there was no light of hope. Although we had not evolved until then, the new underground environment brought to life the talent to adapt our body into a new form. To go anywhere on the ground we had to dig. After digging and digging we saw no result, so we stopped and became plants. The cavemen evolved to live without food, as any plant-based lifeform would do. Previously in the game, we found weird sculptures in an abandoned tribe camp. It is not crazy to think there was another tribe that lived in the past that evolved into that creature. Without the need to create strategies to hunt for food, the use of the brain becomes excessive and futile removing itself from its appendages and digestive organs for a more effective bodily composition, resulting in an empty husk that can only interact with its world in a static, soulless way. Every playthrough will look about the same, yet the personal interpretations and experience of the events will be unique for each person. For many it will be a funny one, many of its quirks could be interpreted that way, Others could see something deeper and more obscure. In a sea of games that copy and try the best to clone other games, Tales of the Sun is the exception. Unapologetically bizarre, eccentric and obscure, yet it's hard to hate a game that is not afraid of being itself and for that reason alone I love it. Thank you very much for watching until the end. If you play this game, please leave in the comments your experience with it. I'd love to see what is your interpretation. Like the video if you found it interesting and subscribe for more PlayStation 1 Madness. Until the next time, I sign out.